Hi, I'm Paul Traney, and this week on Make It, I'm sitting down with Matt D. Smith. I think the D stands for designer or dope because he's a super cool guy, and for the past decade, he's been building a successful career as a UI and UX designer and more. Come with me behind the scenes to see how he does his magic. <laughs> All right, here we are, Matt D. Smith. Good to see you here, buddy. Good to see right you, Paul. Uh, I've actually, I feel like I've known you a while. Um, I don't know how you describe yourself. I know you do UX, UI, have a background doing web stuff. Yeah. How do you describe what you do? I describe myself as a designer because that kind of covers the full gamut. Sometimes I'm designing icons. Sometimes I'm designing strategy for a new application. Sometimes I'm working on a logo for a new client. It mm -hmm. just depends. So it's it's everything. Yeah. Is that is your background design then, or did you? Yeah. So I went to the University of Georgia graphic design program way back in 2005. Graduated there and kind of slowly transitioned from doing more traditional graphic design stuff into kind of the UX world, the user experience, interface, mm -hmm. software, digital all, interface. All this, all this gorgeous stuff that yeah, we see that probably. That Existed in a different form, like uh, you know, a while ago. That's right. Do you sometimes occasionally teach there, right? At I taught the there of one Georgia? semester last year. Okay. I taught a design class. But that's kind of fun. That's kind of come full circle. You yeah. come back as, and I know, kind of teaching and instructing is also kind of part of what you do. Yeah, which absolutely. We'll hopefully see some of that later. Uh, like, but how did you even get into this? Because if you're graduating with a graphic design degree, how does one evolve into UI? UX. Yeah, so my first jobs out of college were doing lots of websites and building flash websites and designing these really bad, horribly awesome websites as I like to describe them. And just a thirst for this whole like digital world and getting more and more into it. And eventually that led to contracting at digital agencies. And that was where my eyes were kind of open to this whole new world of user experience design and information architecture. And I always thought of websites as just people just build websites. And when I got into the agency world and they're doing big projects for big name clients and they're, all the strategy is involved with all the buttons and, and I'm just like, wow, these people are like really taking it seriously. And I was like just kind of mesmerized by the whole process yeah. and uh, just started picking up picking up those things from those different agencies that I worked at. I, I, honestly, I think it's sometimes easy to push pixels around and make something look pretty, but yeah. you're viewing things at a higher level when it comes to you know, user experience. And yeah. that's kind of. And I, I mean, you have to start somewhere. I mean, when I first started, I was pushing pixels, and I was all about making things look really nicely, uh, look really nice. And But eventually, you realize you know, a website needs to perform and you need to start mm -hmm. thinking about where people are coming from, what they're planning on doing, and where you want them to go, and you need to have a little more strategy. But sometimes it can be overwhelming to, to dive into like a giant strategy. So you have to start somewhere and then mm -hmm. broaden your horizons from there. And you have kind of broadened your horizons because you've worked for various agencies, and now you are the owner and creative director of your own studio, yeah? Yeah. Well, studio MDS. That's right. Like, yeah, tell me, how was that going from working for agencies and like where did that work come from like so it was kind of interesting I actually never had a full-time job at an agency it was always contract work and there was one agency in particular that it was going to be mutually beneficial for us to have a vendor agreement through an entity so that was like my initial push for forming my own LLC because sometimes I was there and there's sometimes can be weird gray areas for contractors coming into agencies and so if I had my own entity set up, it would be easier for us to do business together. And so even though I was freelancing at the time for a lot of different people, I went ahead and formed my you know, official business entity back in like 2008 or so. And, and then I was their vendor. And so I had a kind of a retainer with them for like a year, which was plenty enough to kind of take care of all of my own personal bills. And then from there, just kind of built on more and more clients and like working for other... Where did those clients come from? Like, are they... I think it was mostly just building relationships and getting on people's radar and just doing good work and being a good communicator above, you know, design, I would say, is 
you know, it's a big part of it, but being easy to work with and just being a nice guy and mm -hmm. responding to emails, letting the project manager know what's going on. Uh, those yeah. are all like big factors to that I contribute or attribute to my success in that world. And then so when those people would go to other agencies, there wasn't even an interview. They would just say, oh, we need Matt for this project. So they'd give me a call and I would just come in and I would start right away. It's all based on those relationships yeah. and you getting the job done. They were like, hey, we know Matt can do it. Let's do it. Um, but yeah, so you, you, you wouldn't necessarily have to knock on somebody's door and open up your, your uh, laptop and show off a Flash website necessarily to get business. <laughs> That's right. Although we do have some of your Flash websites. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we do. Oh, Can we take we a look? Let's take a look All real right, fast. Let's, let's dive in. Yeah, I'm going to embarrass you is what it's going to come down to. So. Let's do it. Let's take a look here. Oh, well, it's this we have here. What is this? Uh, Lunoset? Yes. Has uh, fancy audio, I think, might come through. Fancy sounds. Oh, Gotta yeah. love this. <laughs> this was it. actually a swimming device that you would strap to your feet to swim through the water like a dolphin. Nice. This is just reminds you of a point in time, by the way. When we look at this and we hear those little clicks and everything, as I roll over these, it's fun to play with, let's be honest. But this is like a portion of your career has been kind of devoted oh to Oh my gosh, I spent so much time <laughs> on the timing between the animations. Like that whole thing doesn't just slide out. It's like, do, 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 do. like yeah, all every... of the difference, the little weird white line that pops out when you roll over it. Can we do this Things one? flying around for no good reason. It was pretty much all I cared about. I was just obsessed with the sound effects, the motion, the animation. And most of what I did here, it might have hit a business problem that was trying to be solved, but it was more about my motion and my art. It was serving me. It wasn't, you know, like I, you I was know serving clients, the business. You don't know if the clients cared as much about the swooshes and some of that stuff. I mean, the guy that, that I did all of this work for, he loved it. And I was glad that he loved it, but it was... I was really focused on what I wanted to build, what I thought was cool. And sometimes I think that can work for a business, but it was much more, it was much more of a kind of like an art, maybe like an artist's approach instead of a mm -hmm. designer's approach. My whole goal there was to embarrass you, but obviously you're like a great designer. So you kind of make me sick a little bit, but we're still gonna challenge you in fact. I have another idea. You ready for All this? Right, I'm gonna just set it. this aside. Uh, because I know you do, uh, you make a lot of uh, various icons, illustrations, small format stuff, large format stuff as well. So I was hoping to challenge you by basically having you pick a couple items at random and then uh, creating an icon out of it. All right. It might be crazy. It might be really conservative. So that's Let's do it. the plan. Here's our little bag of magic goodies. All Just right. How many do you want me to pick out of here? Pick out two. You can put uh, you could put one back if you want to as All well. Right, here's ideally, one. and it might be a status. It could be an object. Could be a number of things. Oh, there we go. They're kind of teeny. We have a spaceship battery. Spaceship battery. All right, that works for me. Does that work for you? What do you sure. think? Are you, you good? You good yeah, with those? Yeah, good. We could do more than one if you want. <laughs> uh, we'll take this with us in case we want to draw out some more, but we'll go right, with spaceship battery because everybody needs a battery for a spaceship. I don't oh, know absolutely. how many times. How would you get into space if you didn't have a battery? Exactly. And how, how full is your battery? Maybe it's, I don't know. It's That's a whole right. thing. But uh, I think we're going to shift gears. We're going to dive into, what are you going to work in? What Let's do, do it in Illustrator. In Illustrator? Fantastic. <laughs> All right, here we are, and this is what you've drawn. We got spaceship and then battery, so that's the goal. All right, spaceship battery. Yeah, spaceship battery. I don't know Shall what that we? looks like. I guess we're gonna find out here in a second. You're All an right. illustrator. Yeah, I'm an illustrator. I have, I went ahead and created a 24 pixel by 24 pixel artboard because that is a relatively standard size. First thing I usually like to do is draw a simple little guide, uh, just right around here. I'm gonna take away the stroke so I can go on a full pixel here. If you have a one pixel stroke, it'll offset on a half uh, pixel size. So now I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna hit Command C, Command F, and I'm gonna make it like 20 pixels. So like both of these and hit Command 5 will give me some like nice artboard guides just to go with. Okay. And uh, that way, sometimes it can be weird to show. Because you did a subtract basically. No, so, Command-5 converts all shapes to outline for guides. Oh, yeah. Command-5, I did not know that. There you go. Awesome. 
Uh, I did pull up some spaceships here for reference. I don't know if I'm going to go full Millennium Falcon or anything. <laughs> Um, I know, you are on a time crunch. We're, I'm well, timing you, by the uh, way. Yeah, so. okay, well, let me get right to it. <laughs> I okay. like your reference. Let's go with like a simple little, uh, we'll go with like a stroked icon here. Maybe we'll go like two pixels, or two points rather. Around the corners. Yeah, and let's add a little point up here so we can Holding make this down, thing. Uh, you had both those selected, just down arrow. Yeah, um, let's see, maybe we should make this come up we probably need like a little propeller fin thing and I'm not sure what they call yeah. it there we go and then we'll reflect Man. this guy is there a quick key for that what for flipping flipping stuff no but you, you're doing exactly it. what I do is right click go to transform that's right and then we'll just put a line right here boom all right so this is like a roughed in kind of icon you can hit command one to check it out but all from basic shapes because you're just using yeah. you know rectangle and then a line but this is not really a, a battery maybe we if we wanted to show like a full-on battery maybe we would do something like put this shape mm -hmm. inside of here maybe this is like showing our juice how much juice we have left mm -hmm. in the spaceship kind of want to get these things lined up so maybe this would be a fully charged spaceship battery. I mean, it doesn't it's all filled up. quite look like a full-on mm -hmm. spaceship per se. And this is only one pixel stroke in here and uh, of negative space. So. So um, yeah, that's a good point. I could yeah, because if you have like the two pixel strokes, you'd really want at least two pixels of negative space yeah. as well. So I could just go in here and say, you know what? Let's just do one pixel here. Um, and then it might be a little bit too wide, and I can bring it back down. So you have snapped pixels on working at, um, what, 24 square? Yeah, 24 by 24. Might even round these things. Here. And I like how fast you're doing these. Uh, it's like almost you're working in like a mirror mode, but you're just selecting those uh, opposing points. Yeah. And then dragging down. Dude, you already changed the shape of it. Let's that looks nice. a little round, more round, rounded. You get the idea. It's I a love fully it, charged I feel like you icon. keep like tweaking this like all day long just to get these different shapes, but really it's like three shapes, one line, an inner shape to kind of show the status. You can start to duplicate that and show, yep. of course, the different, uh, you know, the. We wanted to go like there's only half charge. Boom. There we go. You're way too fast, man. This is good. And what else do you have? Like, so this is awesome. Do you have an arsenal of uh, other icons that you could show us in Illustrator? Yeah. So like, is everything made this way? Because I can just kind of yeah. So take a, a, a recent preview. a recent icon project that I worked on, I did uh, over probably 800 icons or so, and they were all had to be at each uh, different sizes. So these are some of the 800. These are like the 24 pixel icons, the interface category. Um, so you can see these some existing batteries here mm -hmm. so I've done a battery before <laughs> and if you go to this artboard you can see these are the 16 pixel icons so some of these would have to lose a little bit of detail you'd have to so you did 24 16 those are different icons these are different icons because if you look at like, like same objects but you redesigned them exactly. so they hold up as a smaller size so if you look at this calendar for example at 16 pixels well, on 24 and you go to the calendar there's, I can, I have more stylistic opportunity to put gaps between here, but on the 16, they're still there, but they need to be smaller because there's less room. Yeah. And then like, yeah, into the, into the 48 pixel size, it's kind of a completely new style and you can add in a little more elements just because there's more room to add detail. And, and I'm sure all people think that you do is, oh, you just resize it, right? Oh, you just resize, you're done. 32, whatever, 48, you're yeah. done. Yeah. Right? Well, and then yeah. that's the first step. Resize, realign the pixel and then grid. Start adjust everything. And then everything's wonky and you have to go back in and fine tune everything. Yeah, I don't think people realize icon design in, in Illustrator. Uh, two things real fast. Um, XD, do you use XD at all? I use XD. Yeah, so basically you can sort of do your copy and paste and sort of mock this up into a wireframe or prototype as well. Do you have a project open That's by chance? Right. So we just take I, a quick peek at. If I copied and pasted into one of my XD files here, you can see I don't have a ton of icons in this particular project. Um, some some little things like mm -hmm. refresh symbols yeah. and all that. Just kind of sketching it out. 
but you can paste this and thing right in there. I, for those of you who don't know, uh, Adobe XD allows you to design and prototypes. You could actually could create some of the icons here uh, in this design view, and then you also have a prototype. Can you click over to that and yeah, just do absolutely. a, let's see all this, con enter ah, crazy. Yes. Connecting to the all those different web. screens, like super powerful designing prototype in one app. You could share it with whoever you want. I think it's super cool, man. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, so cool. Uh, a little bit about XD, and then how, how would they learn about how, create, how to create icons in Illustrator? Do you have something for yes, us, Yes, yes. Yeah. So we can go to uh, intro, not the spaceship search. Let's close that <laughs> out. You can go to intro to icons.com. You can learn the fundamentals of icon design in one hour. There's 20 fast-paced videos, and you can learn how to use the basic shapes that I just made that rocket ship mm -hmm. for a lot of these other icons. Yeah, that's so slick. So so much we can talk about. I love this, by the way. I don't know if you have a chance to... First of all, I just love your design style. Super clean. Everything about this, I'm into. Well, fantastic, man. It's so fun seeing you. So not only create for us, but show us all these resources, everything, man. True pleasure. Thanks Absolutely. for joining us today. Matt D. Smith, you can find him online. MBS. And tune in each week for more action.